Hi everybody, we are live with another episode of SRH Access Facebook Live and today we are here with Dr. Shane Miller, our sports medicine physician, and we are in our Plano campus right now, but we want to talk about this big move that we have coming. It's coming in October and Dr. Miller, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yes, we are very excited. This has been uh, years in the making, yes. literally, and uh, for the first time in uh, the history of the hospital, we will have a, a separate facility in Frisco. Um, this will be um, an entire Scottish Rite uh, North Campus, so to speak, and it's going to be our Frisco campus. Um, we are very excited. We are right at the corner of Lebanon and the Tollway, so uh, fairly close to the, the Cowboys facility, the Star, so a lot of people are familiar with that. And I think it'll be really nice for families coming from all directions. It'll be easily accessible. Our current location in Plano has is, is, is been great, but it's been a temporary location. We've been planning on moving, and uh, in the next few weeks, we're actually going to be uh, shuttering our doors here in Plano and uh, this location in Plano will be closing and all of our services that are currently offered here will be offered at the Frisco campus and more so um, October 10th will be our first day of seeing patients there so for those of you who have seen us um, here in Plano in the past uh, if you need us again we're going to be in Frisco and uh, um, just a few weeks so that's going to be a big transition for us. And what's going to be the highlight for our sports medicine team up at the new Frisco campus? Well, I think, you know, having a dedicated facility um, that's all of our own, um, we're really looking forward to that. We have uh, a, you know, a great physical therapy gym with indoor and outdoor um, features so that we can train athletes and rehabilitate athletes both in their environment um, as well as in this traditional sort of therapy setting. Um, we have a state-of-the-art movement science lab so we can do motion capture and analysis both from a research standpoint but also from a performance improvement standpoint um, and so really we're going to be offering some technology that that not many other places are able to offer and we are very excited about um, moving into that next uh, stage of our, our our growth absolutely very exciting it's a beautiful building we have pictures and videos on our facebook here actually and online and don't worry if you don't know a lot about this we do have signs posted there's going to be lots of information coming so we'll have that for you as well and today is also team up speak up day right. which has to do with concussions so that's really why we're here to talk with you about what we need to know about team up speak up can you kind of explain it to us so team up speak up is a concept um, that's been around for a few years now and every year we've tried to kind of help spread the word um, you know, the, the theory is is that when we're talking about concussions right and, and um, oftentimes an athlete themselves may be injured and, and so what we're trying to do is to say a good teammate is going to look out for their teammate and speak up and so whether it's football or soccer or wrestling or basketball whatever your sport is if you are worried that one of your teammates may have suffered a concussion then being a good teammate doesn't mean letting them continue to play and hiding the symptoms and not reporting it. That's not a good friend. A good teammate is actually going to watch out for that person and say, hey, I'm worried that this person may be injured. And so this concept, whether it's sports leagues, teams, coaches, uh, clinics, and sports medicine clinics like ourselves, we're trying to get that word out to the athletes themselves and the parents, but a lot of times to the student athletes, um, and so that they're aware of the importance of doing that. Yeah, the idea of if you see something, say something. That's right. Just stay quiet. And right. Why is this so important? What are some of the repercussions if you do keep playing with a concussion or, or don't recognize that these are symptoms? Yeah, so, you know, a, a concussion, as we, you know, know and understand, is a brain injury. And, and it causes problems with the way that the brain functions. And, and sometimes it's, it's very clear that somebody's been injured, you know, and I think everybody in the stands and on the sidelines knows that that, right. that athlete's You hear hurt. the, oh. So, and, and we can see those, you know, so, but, but a lot of times it's not that straightforward and it's not that clear. And so um, we find that athletes may continue to play and, and, and by doing so, they're putting themselves uh, at risk for worse injury. Uh, you know, and, and so I think the most significant of which is this concept known as second impact syndrome. And what that is, is when somebody is injured, has had a concussion, uh, their brain is in a vulnerable state. It's fragile, so to speak. And if they were to sustain another blow to their head or their body, it causes, uh, that can cause the brain to actually swell and can cause very serious problems and including rarely even death. And so that, you know, that is the most devastating and severe consequence of continuing to play. And so that's a very rare event, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and so, but, but when it happens, of course, is, is devastating. And sometimes they can have lifelong changes, um, even if they, you know, don't, don't die. 
Um, but, but more likely, um, they are at an increased risk of sustaining a worse concussion, a second concussion, or prolonging their recovery. And so, you know, a lot of times we say it's better to miss one game than to miss the whole season. Yeah. So, you know, by continuing to play, you know, you know, I, I often hear, well, there's only five minutes left in the game, or, you know, the game was almost over, so I just wanted to finish. Right. And so by playing that extra five minutes, you know, while that may have been important at the time, you may end up missing two more weeks now because... Uh, because you wanted to play that and so so you know getting them out at the time of the injury we feel like is, is a really important part of their management and rec so recognizing and removing them from play and like you said kind of letting the teammates take on some of that if you have the mentality of I just want to keep playing that's understandable but it's up to other people as well to encourage you not to do something like that yeah you know I mean this is again it's a brain injury right we're talking about a brain injury when we're talking about concussions you know the concussion word gets thrown around a lot but but I think we have to realize it is it's a brain injury and, and we're talking about most of the time at least in our world children mm -hmm. right and, and so children's brains are pretty important and that's not something that we take lightly yeah and, and so you know it's different if you have a bruised ankle or a little ankle sprain, and right. we want to kind of tough it out. We get that athlete mentality. We understand that we deal with it every day. Um, but a concussion and a brain injury, this is not one of those things where it's tough, you know, and smart to kind of just push through that. Right. Um, and, and so a brain injury is really different. And you know, we have, you know, we've looked at this, and because it's been you know over a decade now that the recommendations have said, you know, if somebody has a concussion, they should come out immediately. Um, from the game and not go back to play the same day. And so that message, at least in the medical community, is very well you know, understood and, and agreed upon. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's, you know, now it's at the professional level, same thing. If you're an NFL football player or, or a Pee Wee football player, same thing is, is that we pull them out that day and don't let them go back. But what I've found and, and what we've found in our practice here is, is that that's not always happening. Mm -hmm. So we said, well, is this happening more than we realize? And we started to kind of go back and look at that. And so we started doing some research looking at our athletes that come through here. And we found that about 40% of athletes, boys, girls, you know, older, younger, different sports. So this is not just football we're talking about, you know, girls, soccer players, volleyball, cheer, basketball, you know, they're continuing to play the same day as their injury. They're going back in the game. Mm -hmm. And so that's four out of 10 kids you know, that shouldn't be, the numbers should be zero, and, yeah. and they're continuing to play. So we said, you know, that's a real problem. And, and, and so, you know, what's going on there? Is it because, is it all this athlete mentality? Mm -hmm. and, and that was kind of one of our theories, is maybe these kids are just trying to tough it out and push through that. Maybe that's the, that's the problem, and we can correct that. But what we found is, is a lot of them didn't realize they were hurt, mm -hmm. or they didn't realize they had a concussion. So, right. so although it is sometimes the athlete that just says, hey, I'm going to tough through this and push and not say some, a lot of times they either don't recognize that the symptoms that they're having represent a concussion or a brain injury, or the symptoms haven't really come on, or they're so injured that they're not even aware that, they're, that right. something's going on. And that's why this team up, speak up concept is so important, is because we can't depend on the athlete themselves to report their symptoms and come out. Even if they're you know, meaning to do well and mm -hmm. trying to do the right thing, they may not know they're injured. So we, as, as spectators, as parents, as coaches, as officials, and as teammates, have to help protect each other and look out for each other because that's what a good teammate's going to do is, right. is take care of each other. Um, and so letting them play is not, not being a good teammate. So that's why we're trying to help spread this message because the athlete themselves may not even know that they're injured. Yeah, really important, not something you want to mess with. And what right. are some of the symptoms that spectators, teammates, and even a specific player should be looking for? Right. You know, I think a lot of times, you know, when, when there's been some sort of a collision, whether it's a person-to-person -person contact or somebody falling and, and hitting the ground, I mean, there's some sort of a blow to the head, and sometimes it's a blow to the body that causes the head to, you know, and the brain to shake. To concuss means to shake, so the brain is shaking inside the skull. And, and, and so sometimes they're a little bit slow to get up. Sometimes they may sort of clutch their head and grab their head, mm -hmm. um, maybe a little bit unsteady. Um, I, had, I had a family this week that was saying, you know, he just wasn't playing like his normal self. We right. didn't know really what was going on, but he was, well, something was off. We thought maybe he was just tired and dehydrated. Um, and so, so some changes in their playing ability or doing things, they may become more emotional. You know, all of those are some signs that they may be injured. But the athlete themselves, the most common symptom they'll complain about is, is a headache. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of times it's some, some headache or dizziness. Um, they, may, they may have a little bit of memory loss. They may feel a little bit slow or confused. 
lighter noise sensitivity, um, and again, sort of that emotional, uh, you know, they may be more irritable or mm -hmm. more emotional um, during that time. And so, um, you know, any of those sorts of symptoms may want to alert us, especially following a, a blow to the head, um, is something we want to pay attention to and, and see what's going on. Again, you know, we always sort of say, when in doubt, sit them out right. and keep them out. And, and you know, commonly we'll say, I'll hear somebody you know, we're at a, a soccer tournament and, and say, you know, well, you know, we, we pulled her out and took a look at her and the coach kind of did this and her pupils weren't dilated so and so, so we let her go back in, right. And, and so, you know, I usually sort of say, if you're to the point where you think you're trying to decide if your child has a concussion or not, pull them out. Mm -hmm. Don't make that decision on the sideline. Part of that is because the injury is sort of evolving over mm -hmm. several hours and it may look very different two hours after the game than it does on the sideline between the adrenaline and the injury itself. Um, but also, again, I would rather you pull them out and have them be fine than to put them back out there and have them put them at risk okay. because it's very common for them to come in and say, well, she looked okay at the time. We thought she was fine. And then we realized after that was not the right decision. So if you are questioning whether or not there's a concussion, err on the side of being a, you know, more cautious and, and err on the side of safety and pull that child out. Again, it's a child's brain that we're dealing with. And this is one game. You know, and, and they're going to be okay if they miss that game. Let's get them back, keep them healthy, and let them have the career ahead of them. Right, not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> right. And so what is the next step? So you pull somebody out from a game, you think maybe they have a concussion. What would you want parents to know about the next step to take? Yeah, I think the most important thing is sort of observing them um, and kind of getting an assessment on kind of how you feel like they're doing. You know, parents know their kids better than anybody else does. And so, you know, if your child looks okay and other than complaining about some symptoms, they're probably okay to keep an eye on and you're going to want to follow up with your pediatrician or a sports medicine doctor like us, um, you know, and, and make sure things okay. But if your child looks you know, sick or they're doing things that are concerning you. You know, if they keep asking you the same questions, if they're really having severe headaches, if they're vomiting, um, you know, if they're really sleepy and you're having a hard time keeping them awake, um, you know, or really I just sort of tell parents, if you're worried, take them to the ER. You know, I think it's always fine to get them in and, and if your parental instincts are sort of saying, hey, look, I'm worried about my kid, because again, you know them better than anybody else. Um, then that's a good time to go ahead and get them checked out. But, but don't ever hesitate to call your pediatrician's office or, you know, call. And I, and I do recommend that they are evaluated by a healthcare provider who has experience in managing and treating concussions before they go back to play. Don't make that decision yourself as a coach or a parent of, yeah, I think that they're fine and there's not a concussion. Let somebody who knows concussions and, and can deal with these tell you, yes, there was a concussion or no, there wasn't a concussion, your kid's fine help you with that decision-making process. And so whether that's an athletic trainer or a physician, um, somebody who has some, some experience with that, I think is a really good thing. Um, we always focus on getting them back into school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of our kids now, especially with school season, you know, school's back in, and so we wanna make sure they can tolerate doing school well, because if they have a brain injury, maybe their symptoms are fine over the weekend when they're not doing anything, right. and they're just texting and, and hanging out at home, but then they go back to school on Monday, and now all of a sudden their symptoms come back, and they get worse, and say, hey, we thought everything was fine. So, so we really wanna make sure they tolerate school um, and things that make their brain work hard. Yeah, before focus. We put them, that's right, before we have them go back into sports, and then, and then we sort of gradually get them back into things. But most kids are gonna be fine. They just need a little bit of time to recover. We need to protect them while they do so, so that they don't get another hit to their head and don't have sort of worsening of their injury. And we touched on the numbers a little bit in some of the research, but what concerns you about the research that you've seen on concussions? Well, I think that the, that you know the biggest concern is is again that that forty percent is that we want that number to be zero percent. And and within our state, since two thousand and eleven, Texas has had a law. All states now in the United States have a law, and and our law requires that somebody's removed from play at the time of the injury and not allowed to go back the same day. And so that only applies to high school and middle school athletes. It doesn't apply to youth leagues and, and private schools. But that number, you know, even the law says that they should be coming out and staying out, but, but yet 40% of our athletes are not following those guidelines. And so, so I, I think it shows that we have a lot of work to do um, in terms of uh, whether it's education or recognition of these injuries or understanding the importance of, of pulling out uh, you know, an athlete with a suspected injury because that message has not been out there well enough to where it's, it's sinking in, I guess is the point, when almost half of them are continuing to do the wrong thing. And, and these are not, again, they're not usually trying to not listen to us. Right. I think that they just don't, 
um, either don't, haven't heard the message or don't recognize that they have an injury and are continuing to play. And so that, that concerns me is that for 10 years we've been saying this, but yet it's still not sunk in. Right. Do you have any tips for families if they want to come see you or your colleague, Dr. Chung? What's, what's the protocol? What should they follow to do that? Yeah, so, so um, our protocol is basically if you need to see us, you can call and make an appointment. Um, and uh, our phone number is 469-515-7100, and that's for any sports injury. Um, and so certainly concussions is a big part of what we see, but uh, you know any sort of musculoskeletal injury, and, and we have a, a broad group of um, specialists here at Scottish Rite, so we can handle any sort of sports-related concern. Um, and so it, it doesn't need a referral from a pediatrician or um, ER or anything along those lines, they can call us. Um, we've got a great fracture clinic as well that treats a lot of injuries. Um, so we know we know in sports, you know, things happen all the time, and 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 you know, it's never on anybody's schedule. There's never a good time to have an injury. It's not planned. So, so we try we try to work to get them in fairly quickly so that we can help them, you know, assess and get them back to the field. Or, um, you know, in the instance of concussions, kind of help them decide when can they go back to school and how do we help them get back into school. You know, often we focus on school even before sports, but we know that everybody wants to get back out there right. and playing as soon as they can. When somebody comes to see you guys for a concussion-related injury, what are the first steps that you go through when you see them as a patient? Yeah, they spend a lot of time with us when they come through here. So, um, you know, again, unlike sort of a musculoskeletal injury, we actually do a fairly thorough and comprehensive evaluation. We're trying to get a look at the brain's function. You know, the symptoms that the patient's reporting is helpful for us. Mm -hmm to kind of get an idea of where they are, but we really are assessing the function. We're looking at their vision, we're looking at their balance, we're looking at their memory and the reaction time. We're trying to get an idea of how impaired they are and how injured they are and what parts of their brain are not working well. That helps guide our management. Um, so we do spend quite a bit of time doing a lot of the evaluation and then we spend a lot of time with education about the injury, what we're finding on our exam, and what our recommendations are. And a big part of what I try to focus on is to help the family know what to expect. Yeah. Um, you know, we see you know, hundreds of these a year in the families, it's the first time that their child's had an injury, and it's scary. scary. Yeah. It is, you know, especially if you were there and you saw the child go down and they were having a really hard time. I mean, it's your child and you're worried about them, and we get that. Um, and, and so letting them know what to expect and, and kind of what to anticipate, and then we have resources between our nursing staff, our athletic trainers, uh, ourselves, um, to help answer questions along the way, because things come up, you know, and, and if, if you have any questions, we're always up there and available, so that's what we try to provide some education about what to expect so that they make them a little bit more comfortable as they go along this process to recovery. Is there a time that's too late if you think you've had a concussion and, and it's been several days? Like, do you still encourage people to come sure. in even if it's been? Yeah, so yes, the, the earlier that we can get involved and intervene, um, we think the, the better the recovery prognosis and, and they tend to recover more quickly because we're able to sort of implement some of these recommendations early on. Um, but that doesn't mean we have to see you within 24 hours. So if we see you within the first week, usually that, you know, you're gonna end up doing better. But we often will see patients that come to us and they've been managed somewhere else or, or maybe their symptoms aren't getting better and we see them as sort of uh, second opinions or, or for, to kind of help them get back on the road to recovery. So we see them both ways, but, but we're certainly uh, very happy to see them early on. Um, as I mentioned some research, we, we are actively, we have, we have many studies going on right now um, and, and including lots of concussion studies. Um, and so we, we, are, we very much like seeing patients with concussions. Um, and part of that is because we can better understand this injury um, so that we can then answer patients' questions better and, and hopefully treat them better moving forward based on the trends that we're seeing and the things that we're doing. Um, and so, so we, we will probably encourage families to participate in some of our research studies. That doesn't mean that we're you know, poking them and, and using right. them as a guinea pig. It, a lot of times it's just sort of following along and seeing how they do and making sure that three months down the road they're still doing okay and, and, and sort of learning and making sure that school and life is going okay down the road because you know, we think that they're doing fine, we've, we've moved on, and so a lot of times we you know, want to follow up with them. Yeah. Um, and so yes, we, we definitely are happy to see them at any point. And is there a certain timeline that you see most kids fall through as far as how long <laughs> until they can go back to their regular activities or go back to play? Yeah, about 80% of kids are going to recover back to, to normal within three or four weeks. Okay. Some kids it's a few days, you know, and they're fine. Um, but most athletes within three or four weeks, within that month time range, are going to be fine and are back to their normal lives. But that means that about 20%, you know, one in five kids are going to take longer than that. 
And there's a lot of different reasons for that. And those, those are really challenging, you know, and frustrating for the families yeah. too, because, um, you know, there, there's not a clear answer of it will be six weeks, it will be eight weeks. Um, you know, and so we are, we're constantly trying to figure out exactly why, why are they not recovering and, you know, what's unique about this patient. And, I mean, we individualize the treatment based on what's going on with them, what their exam looks like. Um, but yes, most kids are going to do fine and bounce back fairly quickly. Um, and of course, you know, they want to get back out there and not miss any time. But a lot of times after a few weeks, they're back into their sport and school and life is good again. And you mentioned this, all of these services that are being provided here in Plano, specifically for concussions and for other things, will be available in Frisco. That's right, plus more. Yes, yes, everything we're offering here is going to be moving to Frisco, um, and then we're, we're expanding quite a bit, including our general orthopedics and hip and, uh, and physical therapy and, and research. Everything's coming with us, so it's going to be a, a, a mini Scottish ride up north with an expanded sports medicine uh, practice up there, and surgery, MRI, everything. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Miller again, and talking about Team Up, Speak Up, a very important message. We'll see you next time.